I've engaged the MC button and added color two. And it's working just perfectly. I've got this short long button set on long, so it should actually knit each one of these punched rows twice, and we'll see if it's doing that. And it is. So now I'm simply going to remove color two, not change anything else. I bumped that, sorry. Except the settings on the carriage. On KC, still on the same stitch size with the same card, but we'll push both part buttons. And we should get single color slip stitch. And indeed we are. No changes except coming over, pushing the tuck buttons. Ooh, sorry about my thumbnail. I just finished cleaning all the needles on here. Now they're clean and I'm not. Working beautifully. But for a change, let's change the tuck by bringing it back to normal length where the card should advance every single row. And you can see the design shortened up just as it's supposed to. Excellent. Good. We're testing lace. I'm going to move the repair at 892. This is one of my favorite machines. It belongs to a production knitter. And it just needed a good bit of TLC. The main complaint, as I recall, was that intermittently the row counter was, not row counter, card reader, was failing to advance. And we cured that, but we had to make sure that the lace was working correctly. Everything else has seemed to cooperate nicely. And this is our final phase of adjustment and checking. I'm really pleased with it now. And the thing about this was we got the advanced situation where it was very solidly dependable. We did a little narrow test and everything worked fine. And Catherine always says, I want to do a large project before I turn it over to someone who might want to do a large project. So this is where we're at on the testing page. I can make a lined lace hat out of this. I'm trying some short rowing here. Progressively putting needles in hole. I've got a claw weight in the center where the meeting's getting longer, plus the assistance of my thumb. The carriage is set to H to do this, so this is like making a sock heel. Whoops. More than I intended. That's a pretty small heel. Yes, for, um, I don't know, a Barbie Bigfoot, maybe? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to put them back into work two at a time. Works fine. You mean everybody doesn't have a Sasquatch Barbie? Well, personally, I don't. Oh. Now, I'm going to call, call Mattel. How can they resist an idea like that? Right. You might see some holes forming. Uh, that's because I'm not wrapping. And it's not necessary just to make sure 
that the whole position is holding. But let's also make sure that knitting back from hold works properly. I've moved it to end. Back we go. Still on end. Back we go. One. I want to show you um, Intarsia on this machine. It's built in, which is cool. But it won't go unless you depress the white button. And also it won't work, as I just had to remind myself, unless you press both part buttons, which are also used for intarsia. Now we're ready. The intarsia setting brings the needles out to this partly extended position. And working with balls of yarn hanging down, or intarsia bobbins, you lay the yarn in where you want it to be knit, and it knits in like that. We don't use the yarn feeder at all. And this one's doing a nice job. You always wrap the two colors around one another. Right now what I'm doing is knitting a vertical pair of stripes, but I could change that and make a picture. Here I'm moving over knitting more yellow than I was last time. And this time I'll move to the left and knit less yellow and more red. I really love machines that have a built-in intarsia feature. And this one is working perfectly. And here are the results of what I was doing. You can see where I changed which needles were involved in red and which in yellow. In order to ensure a thorough test, I knitted this which I think included about 1,200 total rows, so we know that card is advancing now.